Welcome to the number one health and wellness show across the nation. Get ready to tap into the best fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle advice right at the palm of your hands. Tune in to powerful interviews that uncover key components to conquer the mind, body, and soul. Unlocking your greatest potential, it's the Fight for Your Life Health and Wellness Show right now on AM 1340 and 96.9 FM Fox Sports Radio. Here's your host, Jessica Lane. Hi guys, welcome to the Fight for Your Life Health and Wellness Show on Fox Sports Radio. Today I am super, super excited for who I will be interviewing. Her name is Miss Lita Lewis. And for those that don't know, she is a fitness influencer, but something that really, really stood out to me about Lita is the fact that, you know, she is trying to change the the fitness myth and the myth that women have to subscribe to a social standard of fitness and of beauty. And that's actually going to get us right into our topic for today. The topic for today is the beauty trap, uh, breaking societal norms and not subscribing to the standards of fitness. How are you today, Lita? I'm doing so well. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to warm up just a little bit. So if you had to describe Lita in one word, like if you had to just say, I'm going to describe myself in one word, what would that one word be and why? Um, you know, I think there's a, a bunch of words that come out at me when I want to describe or ask to describe myself. But mm-hmm. one thing that resonates the most would be the word ambitious. Because uh-huh. I've been that ever since, as, as long as I can remember, I've been super ambitious about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Not just, um, how, how I feel about my family or, um, relationships, both, um, um, personal, intimate, uh, but those that I have with my, my own family or coworkers, um, my desires to travel and change things, create things has always been an ambitious kind of task. So I think ambitious is the reason or the word that I would use to describe myself. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good word to describe yourself with because there are so many people in this world that, you know, are complacent and not moving forward and not um, living their dreams. And we all see you, girl, living the life. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Of course, of course. So, Ms. Lita, you know, you are from Australia, but, you know, you were born in, actually, you were born in California, and then you were raised in Australia, and now you're living back in California. What was that like? Like, what was the cultural experience in Australia and then coming back to America? Yeah, um, it's funny. My parents always say that I've come full circle because as you just meant, mentioned, I was born um, in L.A., mm-hmm. um, where I reside. But um, my parents moved to Australia when I, I think before I turned two. So I was pretty much raised in Australia. Um, and then at the tender age of 23, I decided to move to New York City on my own. Um, and I did that and lived there for almost 10 years before I moved to LA. So I kind of did this big little circle around the world and ended up where I was actually born. Um, <laughs> how was it like? It's, it's, it's funny. I don't have anything else to compare it to outside of it just being my reality in my life. But now that I've lived my majority of my adult life um, in the States, uh-huh. um, comparison to my upbringing, I mean, it's almost night and day. The comparisons are very vast, um, but both of which have been truly amazing building blocks to who I am as a person, who I am as a woman today. So um, I think it's a little, what's unique about myself is that I have, I have this, uh, a different perspective than say, um, say your, your common uh, woman of color in the United States, one that's been born and raised here. Right. Not. But um, I'd like to think that I have like a different approach or a different perspective that has um, my fellow community maybe look at things a little different differently as as I perceive them. Um, so that that yeah, if I don't know if that answers your question, girl. But I will talk in circles if you allow me. <laughs> run my no, no, it did, it did definitely answer my questions. So um, 
how is it how is it that you got into fitness like how did that journey begin yeah so I think for, for me, fitness has always been a key staple of my life, but on different levels of capacity. So different levels. So I was um, at a very young age, my mother had put me into sports. I ran track and field. I played football and they were always um, a staple in my childhood. Um, However, when I moved to the United States, I, I walked right in uh, the corporate world. Nothing about what I did was, was um, fitness related. However, on the side or after work, if you will, I would always uh, find myself in the gym or doing something active because moving my body was always important to me. Um, but as far as how I got started in fitness, uh, it really came to a point where um, I took fitness or how I, I, I dedicated time and energy to fitness um, something significant in my life happened. And, and essentially in, in a sentence or two, basically I, I kind of was suffering from heartache. Um, an ex-boyfriend of mine broke my heart. And in order to deal with that, I threw myself in the gym um, and w was in there for excessive amounts of time, maybe, you know, five, six days a week um, mm -hmm. until it really became something that um, I was using as a tool for healing. Right. And that's how essentially I got into fitness the way I am and how I exist today. Isn't that such a beautiful thing though? Like that's so beautiful because so many people, at least you found a, a positive outlet when, when something went wrong. So many people, they turn to things that won't progress them in life. And isn't it crazy how things just come full circle? Absolutely. I, now in hindsight, I realized I was supposed to go through that so I right. can you know, essentially raise up or, or stand up, if you will, to something that was, was heartbreaking or knocked me down. That just taught me resiliency and perseverance. And um, I think that now, as I, like I said, in hindsight or looking back, I realized everything had a, had a purpose. Right. Um, I, I love that. And without sounding too cliche, um, it's like fitness kind of saved my life um, in the sense of it kind of changing the whole direction in, in, in which I was going. Because in that time, I was in a very depressed place and, and not, not healthy at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to ask you, what do you love about fit fitness the most? But you saying that it saved your life is such a, a profound statement that I don't feel like anything, any question tops that. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I think what I love about fitness more so, and, and I'm sure I would have said it back then, mm -hmm. like I say it today, is the fact that it's really important for me um, to honor um, uh, my body. And for me, that doesn't necessarily mean being in the gym, lifting mm -hmm. crazy weights like five days a week. Um, for me, it just it is therapy. It is um, it's a time for me to sort of invest in my own self. It's a time for me to focus. Um, it's, it's self-care um, and it's also a tool. It's a tool um, that can be used to heal um, like I did many years ago. Um, and I think a lot of people use fitness or this idea of um, physical activity as a way to escape essentially reality, but it is a positive. It's not, not, not a negative or an addiction, a negative addiction. Um, so I think essentially what fitness what I love about fitness the most is that it allows me to, on a daily basis, become the best version of myself. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That is. That's truly beautiful. So you've gone all around the world teaching fitness. Um, where do you think that your favorite place has been? The, my favorite place is, is, has always been um, two, two places. One, home. Home back in Australia because it mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing to go back home and sort of being recognized for the work that I essentially started here in the States. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that I can be someone amongst my own family um, that I, you know, can inspire others and, and educate uh, those that I love most in the world about the true benefits of health and fitness. And then clearly here in the United States, um, being here, I spoke to uh, a direct audience um, that were other women of color specifically mm -hmm. um, and shared a message that was my truth. And in doing so, I found that there were women all over the place in multiple cities kind of saying, oh my gosh, me too. That's how I think. I, 
thank you. Finally, someone that's a more of a representation of who I am as in the fitness space. And, and I find that um, if it weren't for the audience that I have here in the United States, I essentially wouldn't be able to do what I do. So, you know, bringing fitness, being a voice of fitness, being a voice for women's health um, here in the United States is, has definitely been um, a key staple to my growth and, and um, my business. Um, and then I suppose if I was to choose a city in which <laughs> is one of my favorite places, especially to run camp, that would be, uh, that would be uh, Brooklyn, New York, because that's where it all began. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. So you mentioned that, that um, there were a lot of women that resonated with your message. What message was that exactly? Sure. So in my whole um, healing of self, um, I, I turned to the gym. I became pretty addicted. I was always in the gym. I love the gym. Um, I then got into the sport of bodybuilding and I competed for several years um, in the division of women's figure. So after competing, I found my, my body yo-yoing. Like I went all the way down to 9% body fat, um, which is crazy now that I think about it because I couldn't even imagine being at 14 or 15 these days. But 9% um, 9, 9 body fat. I, I, I carried a very lean body. Um, in my mind, I was strong and I was agile. Um, but then when I stopped the, um, you know, the dieting and the intense workouts, my body decided to become what it naturally is. Right. Um, um, as my creator created it, you know, right. and then all of a sudden it was very different from this extreme or the extremities of bodybuilding. Right. And then I was kind of like, dang, all my, all my peers in that time were like, yo, so what you going to do? You're going to keep on competing. Yo, you've put on a lot of weight. Um, and it kind of had me down. And I was like, I still continue to train, just not on that intense uh, right. intensity. Right. Um, I continued uh, to move, take classes, um, be active. I was still eating like relatively. Right. It wasn't like I wasn't eating diet food, but I was eating well. And then I was kind of like, you know what? I am strong, healthy, beautiful. I am who I am. Like, why all of a sudden I stepped away from this sport? Uh, I, am I not those things anymore? So I was like, you know. F that, like, I'm just going to become another definition of what it looks like to be feminine, female and proud, strong and beautiful, capable, fast, agile. And then they, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. And I just claimed it. And when I claimed it, you know, we're, as we all are, we're all on social media, sharing our messages, sharing our realities. I was doing that. And in doing so, I realized there was women, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, San Diego, Philly, Boston. You name it, we're like, me too. Oh my gosh, me, 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 that's me, that's me. But everywhere else in mass media, um, uh, were telling us, no, that's not healthy, that's not beautiful, that's not feminine. And we were like, yes, it is, all right, because we, as women of color, we are not built like everybody else or the social standards, which is defined right. as strong, feminine, beautiful. And we can use the greatest goat of all time, Serena Williams, as a pure perfect example of this um so i just i just basically in short accepted who i am um still uh, was not discouraged to live a life that i was continuing to live right even though it did not mirror or, or look like you know what it once was and said this is me man i'm gonna just i'm just gonna rock out i'm proud of it and then i just i think that in hindsight now i realize i was encouraging other women to own them their own curves and their own bodies and then find their confidence because finally there was someone that kind of looked like them that was a representative of a positive message for themselves <laughs> so literally every question that i was going to ask you you just answered in one <gasps> entire job for you no but it's great though because yeah, I read that your message was to, and your mission is to truly change how the Americanized standard of beauty is represented. And you are doing that all day long, especially for African American women. Um, through that, what do you think is one of your most inspiring testimonials that you have ever heard from someone that you have touched? Oh, you know what, Jessica, what is the greatest thing of what I do? Um, um, is 
reaching the perfect stranger you have never met. Often this might be come in the form of a direct message on Instagram or an email um, from a woman literally on the other side of the world. And it basically starts with, um, you know, because of you, I was able to literally, and, and to read some of the emails or the testimonies of people's stories simply based on sharing my own truth is what I believe, um, a God given gift, which then reinforces that what I'm doing is my God given purpose. Is your purpose. Right. Absolutely. Because I could do this. Um, if, um, I was not paid a dime, um, I would do this if, if I had no legs, if I would do this, as long as I had the spirit and the mouth in order to share what I share, um, and not being rewarded for it or recognized for it because it's so easy and I love to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, truly there is, there is many things, but I will mention this since you asked for a specific testimony, there was a woman in Texas. I remember she was in Texas. She wrote me an email and this is right at the very beginning of essentially, um, my, my fitness career or even my, the depth of my influence right. on social media, but she was a, a recently single mother of three. She had um, a son and two daughters. Her youngest child was, if I remember correctly, seven or eight years old. And she was always very avid in sports. And at the time she was playing soccer and she loved soccer. Due to her divorce um, and, and, you know, the back and forth um, with that, um, she, she admitted that she started to f um, suffering from depression. She was always an active mom. That stopped. She was always pretty conscious about the type of food she was cooking for her children. She said that stopped. A lot of it was fast food. A lot of her personal choices based on her depression that she was going through were having a direct impact on her children, specifically her youngest who she says um, ended up gaining a lot of weight mm -hmm. because of that weight, her, she grew um, insecurities, was too insecure to wear her soccer uniform, decided she wanted to quit because the other kids were teasing her. And then when she had that um, sit down moment with her daughter, she realized that her actions and her decisions um, were a direct impact of her daughter's or how her daughter thought about herself. And she said, when she started following me, she said that she was encouraged to change her mindset to start making better decisions, not just for her children, but for herself. Cause she realized she was the martyr that everything that she did right. with her children um, were watching, listening and following. So reading this entire email and it went on and on, but I could go on. Um, touched me so much. I had a moment. I remember just weeping, crying at my computer as I read this email. And it was actually then I realized, wow, I don't even know this woman, but the impact that I, I can, I have on her has changed everything. And then she told me that between her and her daughter, they had lost something like 60 pounds that they had this routine. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, like every Wednesday they they did some uh, like a yoga class together or something of that nature. Uh, this is, this was several years ago. And then I, I, I was just beaming with happiness and, and pride because again, it's simply just something that I love to do and it was helping me. And now to actually realize in an email that it was helping others, I, I really couldn't be any more thrilled and, and happy. So that was one thing that really sticks. Yeah, I think that you inspire us all. I told you that when I first met you, I was like, oh my God, you know, because you truly are an example of what so many women um, need to see and need to look up to because there are so many standards of beauty out there, especially in the fitness industry. You have women adding on to their bodies or extracting things because they don't feel as though they're beautiful just to try to become beautiful. Right. And that is a sad reality that we live in these days. It's like the, an, an era that, um, that is, it's kind of funny because I feel like as much as there are those that are very quick to go under the knife or maybe doing unhealthy practices in order to look a certain way for aesthetic reasons, like I, I mean, maybe I'm just blessed, but I'm also around very positive um, ambitious uh, women that are sharing a true uh, right. message. Um, so I think in this era, there is a heightened, um, uh, growing, uh, a heightened kind of like number wise of people that seem to be sheep, 
right? That seem to not be caring about working on the best version of themselves versus wanting to look, be like, sound like, walk like, talk like somebody else, which is sad mm -hmm. to me. But I think yeah. there's other deeply rooted issues in there. Um, versus um, the other women that I also know that are sort of increasing in numbers that are kind of like, here I am, um, unapologetically living their best life and encouraging other people in their lives as well. So um, th there's, this, there's these two worlds, right? But I think as long as like people like you and I, because I know you two are also in this field, continue to share a very strong message and be completely um, um, resilient in that message and very confident in that message without even realizing it, there are young women that look like us that hear us. And I think um, it, it matters that we continue to share our message uh, to the masses. What, what would you say to someone that does not love themselves? Because essentially, it's, I know that's a loaded question, but essentially that is why people do what they do. It's because of, of that, I need to subscribe to societal norms or I need to fit in or everybody else has this image and I want it too. And I, I need to hurry up and get it because I don't think my body could ever look like this if I don't. Right. A lot of people that really battle with self-love, like, and, and people are like, how do you define self-love? Like, I don't even know what that is. And so I, I tell people this. I think self-love is really rooted in um, understanding what your own personal truth is. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? Someone's personal truth. For me, I define my personal truth is living and leading a lifestyle, right, that makes me undeniably happy, makes me motivated, inspired to be every day a better version of myself the following day. Um, that is my truth. My truth is, is pure and it, it is wrapped in happiness and love. So when, when in answering or when asking somebody, you know, why don't you love yourself? We need to understand one's whole history to understand how they got to a point where there is no love. Because I think as children, we care about, we, we love ourselves. And it, it is something yeah. that happens throughout life that deteriorates. And we as adults are not often reminded that there are plenty of reasons to love ourselves. There are plenty of blessings um, that our life um, entails that we tend to neglect. Okay, so lastly, because we're going to wrap this up just a bit. So, is there anything that you would like to leave for Fight for Your Life viewers? Yeah. Um, you, I think we spoke on it uh, a little earlier. I think for the most part, or as a whole, especially when I tour and I, I run my Body Blast boot camp in different cities, what I'd love to leave with people is that what I do and what many, I'd like to think many people in my position do, is so much more than fitness. It's way more than fitness. I tell people this all the time when they come to see me or come work out with me, right. is that I understand and recognize that you could be any, be anywhere uh, working out with anyone given any time, but for whatever reason, um, you're here with me today, just as you are listening to this today. So it is more than movement. It is more than fitness. What I think this brings, or at least my intentions is, is bringing a community of people, specifically women, because that's who I speak to, and bringing them together and understanding that we are all sisters. This is all love. And whether or not you're, you're a fitness enthusiast or you're an entrepreneur or you're, you're a dedicated nurse or whatever field you're in, we have to recognize each other as pure love and want to help each other. Because fitness is working on the physical body. I also like to speak to mental, spiritual, and emotional health. Um, so I tell people this, community, sisterhood, and unity. If we can all bring this together, and understand, recognize each other as ourselves, I think that would make for a better world. And as Gandhi always says, just be the change you want to see in the world. I try to move like that. Um, so whether or not I'm doing fitness or tomorrow, I, I just decide to change my career up and decide I want to inspire the world by being an art teacher. It doesn't matter. It's always about community, sisterhood, and unity that's going to make us better and make other generations behind us better. Right. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, I'm always trying, listen, I have a great community and bringing value to that community is always important to me. 
Um, right now, I always, every year around uh, spring and summer, I tour with uh, my Body Blast Bootcamp, hitting various cities. Um, whenever um, I'm promoting those, I'll use social media and everything will be on my website. I also run an annual re retreat. That's a destination retreat. Mm -hmm. um, this in the grill Jamaica which I'm super excited about um, and these retreats are, are curated by myself and it's not just uh, workouts and physical physical movement we also do yoga meditation and we have open discussions so where we can really bounce ideas and trials and tribulations and triumphs with one another which are one of my favorite things to do um, I'm also usually a part of different conventions, fit expos that are always on my calendar. Again, those things can always be found on my website also. So there's always a gamut of things going on and it's usually um, me just promoting or, or advertising these things or, or where I'm going to be in whatever city um, on my website or on social media as well. Right, right, right. So make sure you let me know whenever this retreat is so I can let our listeners know just so that we can come out because it's such a, a powerful thing that you're doing, especially for women. And there's so many people that need more of it and need I, to be part of that community. Thank you. I shall let you know. I mean, the girl, Jamaica is kind of wrapping up. But next year we plan on going to Costa Rica. And I cannot wait because I've been there before and it was amazing. So What's I will to Jamaica. Pardon me? What are the dates of Jamaica? Jamaica is November 29th to December 3rd. Oh, that is right around the corner. It is around the corner. It go, it's, time flies. I started planning this back in like February, so it's insane. It's around the corner now. Time does fly. Okay, well, make sure you let me know about Costa Rica because we're going to make that happen. Yes. Okay, sounds good, girl. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lita. Thank we you so much. We you today. Such a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely.